And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs, a time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh bin Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh bin Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh bin Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years, a story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. Hey. The, the universe of you hey wav hey. 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 Brought, Brought to you, to you by, by the nation, nation of you hey wav hey. Wav hey. Working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death. This is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the day of judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse. And it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end time the Messiah would be revealed and at that time he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah is Yahweh bin Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers, who transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Hey, and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Hey. In order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh wav -Hey. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, Laws and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count, and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of God yud heh wav -Hey, then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. We invite you to study along with us. However, 
In order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom, my name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yishrael. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh. The first two commandments ever given to man were given to Adam, which was to dress and to keep the Garden of Eden. We have already discussed the word dress, which was the first commandment. And now we are discussing the second commandment that Yahweh gave to Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. Last week, we documented that the Hebrew word for keep is spelled from right to left, Sheen Mem Resh, pronounced Shemar. And we validated that one of its meanings is to take notice of by appropriate conduct. We carefully examined this definition and told you that the word notice suggests to pay attention to, listen to, and give ear to, which means to receive communication and to take into the mind. We also told you that notice instructs one to observe, consider, and take heed of. The word appropriate is synonymous to proper, and proper means conforming to established standards of behavior or manners. Conduct was defined as a standard of personal behavior, especially as based on moral principles. Principles, we told you, are equivalent to laws, ordinances, and commandments. Therefore, from these documented facts, we asserted that Yahweh commanded Adam to keep the Garden of Eden in a heavenly state. And in order for Adam to do this, Yahweh commanded Adam to take full notice of his, Yahweh's voice, and to retain only his, Yahweh's words. Furthermore, Yahweh commanded Adam to govern his personal behavior on his, Yahweh's, established standards. And we explain that Yahweh's established standards are his moral laws, ordinances, and commandments. We read Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12, 13, and 15, and explain that as Israel, the seed of Adam, we are required to walk in all the ways of Yahweh, to love him, and to serve Yahweh, our God, with all of our heart and with all of our soul. And even more, we told you that we are to keep all of Yahweh's commandments and his statutes, which he, Yahweh, commands us this day. Even more, as the seed of Adam, Yahweh had delight in our fathers to love them. And because of this, Yahweh chose us, their seed, after them, above all people as it is this day. Today, we shall continue to discuss the specifics of the second direct commandment that Yahweh gave to Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden heaven. Documented in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, copyright 1990 of the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary on page 118, reference number 8104, keep in Hebrew is shamar, which also means to hedge. On the authority of Webster's New World Dictionary, third college edition, copyright 1994, on page 625, hedge means to guard as by surrounding with a barrier. Referenced in Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1989, on page 541, guard means one assigned to protect another. On page 946, 
Protect means to maintain the status of, especially through financial guarantees. And on page 1152, status means the condition of a thing in the eyes of the law. Eyes of the law, as used here, means the faculty of intellectual perception. Thus, Yahweh assigned one, Adam, to maintain the condition of the Garden of Eden by using his intellectual perception of the law. Whose law? Yahweh's law. And even more, Yahweh commanded Adam to do this through financial guarantees. And not only that, but as by surrounding with a barrier. Question number one. How was Adam to maintain the condition of the Garden of Eden through financial guarantees? Let's answer this question with the facts. Financial, as you know, deals with money or some medium of exchange. Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, page 540, defines guarantee as an assurance for the fulfillment of a condition. So Yahweh commanded Adam to exercise his intellectual perception of the law as an assurance that the financial means to maintain the Garden of Eden would be fulfilled as by surrounding it with a barrier. Question number two. What kind of barrier was Adam commanded to surround the Garden of Eden with? Let's also answer this question with the facts. According to Webster's New World Dictionary on page 113, barrier by definition means a customs gate on a country's border. On page 341, custom means taxes imposed by a government on imported and occasionally exported goods. Gate suggests a means of access or entrance. On page 1217 of the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodale, the word tax is equivalent to the word tithe. Tithe comes from the Old English teogatha, and it means tenth. The root word of imported is import. Import comes from the Latin word importare, and it means to bring in, introduce. From these facts, we can see that to keep the Garden of Eden, Adam was assigned to encircle the earth with the law of Yahweh concerning the tithe of the land, which was his assurance that the financial means to maintain the conditions of the Garden of Eden would be fulfilled. He, Adam, was to teach the inhabitants of the earth that a tenth of everything that is brought into or is introduced from the land belongs to Yahweh. Let us open our Bible and read Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30, and it reads, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is Yahweh's. It is holy unto Yahweh. Ten percent of all things that comes from the earth or that is made from the land belongs to Yahweh. Yahweh commanded Adam to teach this law to all the inhabitants of the earth and to teach us that if we obey this law, we will be blessed. But if we do not keep this law, we will be cursed according to Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 10, which reads, Will a man rob Yahweh? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith Yahweh of hosts, 
if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. To rob Yahweh is to not keep this law. And to not keep this law means that not only are we cursed, but we are cursed with a curse. According to the Synonym Finder by J. I. Rodale on page 25, curse is synonymous to evil days or times, misfortune and vexation. Adam was commanded to warn the people of the earth that if we do not keep the law concerning the tithe of the land, we would experience evil days and times, and we would also be subjected to misfortune and vexations. However, on the other hand, if we, the people of the earth, keep this law, we would be blessed. Some synonyms for blessed are happy, joyful, fortunate, provided, and supplied. Thus, Adam was commanded to inform the people that if we keep the law concerning the tithe of the land, we would experience eternal happiness, everlasting joy, and good fortune. Even more, Yahweh would provide and supply our every need as promised in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, and it reads, But my God Yahweh shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Yahweh ben Yahweh. In order to keep the Garden of Eden in a heavenly state, Yahweh commanded Adam to use his faculty of intellectual perception to teach the people to keep the laws of Yahweh. And more specifically, Yahweh commanded Adam to keep the law of tithing, which will give him, Adam, the financial means to maintain and to protect the condition of the Garden of Eden so that all the people of the earth may enjoy heaven. Next week, we shall continue our discussion of the second commandment that Yahweh gave to Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi, is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear witness to you today that the one all religions have been speaking of for almost 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. Most people are not aware of the fact that America is in the Bible. She is cryptically called Babylon, Revelation 18:2. In 1986, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, sent the president, vice president, his cabinet, every senator, and congressman, the book Yahweh Judges America 
which warned them of the inevitable destruction of America. This book explains all that the prophets said would come upon America in the day of judgment. You can now read what Yahweh ben Yahweh told the government over 10 years ago. To get a copy of Yahweh Judges America, call the number on your screen today. What does eternal life mean? Eternal life means life without end. It means forever. Not only during the time of one's natural life, but through endless ages of eternal life and blessedness. To find out more, read The Messiah Revealed by Yahweh Ben Yahweh. To order, call us at 1-800-967-7337 or check out our new website and online bookstore at www.yahwehbenyahweh.com. Who is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life, politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is eating butter and honey that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 15 Milk and honey is known to be food for the gods. Yahweh ben Yahweh, the Messiah, is establishing the kingdom of peace, the peace of paradise. For it is written that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh, Yahweh ben Yahweh, comes. And unto Shiloh, Yahweh ben Yahweh, shall the gathering of the people be. Genesis chapter 49 verse 10. The gathering of the people promises the restoration of the condition of paradise. The unifying element among these scriptures reveals the mystical figure of the original man, the king of paradise, the Messiah, Shiloh, the prince of peace. Yahweh ben Yahweh is fulfilling the expectation of the Savior, the Davidic Messiah. The central content in the eschatology of the Old Testament is the coming of Yahweh to complete His dominion through judgment and salvation. It is absolutely heartwarming and enlightening to witness the coming of the Messiah in the Scriptures. The Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, has come. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, 
until Shiloh comes. And only unto Shiloh, Yahweh ben Yahweh, shall the gathering of the people be. Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates, our children of the light. <laughs> that just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. Yahweh is most merciful, for he still loves us the lost sheep of the house of Israel, in spite of the fact that we have transgressed the laws of Yahweh. As prophesied, Yahweh has given unto us his son, Yahweh ben Yahweh, and he shall guide us out of the mindset of America with great substance, and we shall dwell in New Jerusalem forever. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikardesh Shemayaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yiase Razonka, Kiva Shemayim Kain Ba'aretz, Et Lekem Kukainu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Akati Enu. Kimosha Sol King, Gamanaknu, La Koteom Lanu, Veal Tefienu, Lade Nisayom, Kim Kal Senu, Min Hara, Kilaka, Hamumlaha, Veha Gibera, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and His Son Yahweh bin Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem! To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on Yahweh the ineffable name. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen. <laughs>